Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the newest episode of Pop Talks. I am your host, Andy Foreman. I'm sitting here with... I'm Jason Cox, and I'm here to tell you, if you can dream it, you can do it! Like being a repeat guest on Pop Talks, of which we have our first returning guest. Introduce yourself, Mr. Hey, returning folks. Guest. I'm Ben Jenkins, and they asked me back again, despite the fact that they were here for the first time and saw exactly how badly I did, so they I, clearly believe in second chances. I snuck, a, I snuck a look at your dream journal, I saw that you're literally dreaming about being back on Pop Talks, so yeah. I mean, I figured that's what that was about. Yeah, it's right on top of my list, it's right underneath Meet Mark Hamill. Mm. And right underneath, uh, or right below, above Meet Carrie Fisher, which is now vigorously crossed out. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine scenarios where you would run into Mark Hamill like at a convention in the bathroom or something, you just happen to be in the stall next to him, you have like a, like a, like a, yeah. or like, I was thinking urinal stall, but yeah, I guess that. Oh, would. so Mark, do you have to aim it, or does the force just naturally, <laughs> yeah. like, I was thinking more along the lines of like a, a cheesy lightsaber oh, yeah. pun or um, something. He would probably get really excited to hear, to talk, talk about it too, he'd be like, well the thing is. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess if it's like splashing a lot, then you could, you could say, ooh, the force is strong with that one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Too much force, too much yeah, from the urine. Yeah, or he's taking a shit, and then you just hear him like grunting, and then he goes like, Ugh, "You want the impossible?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, size matters not, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Go back up. You're not doing any good down there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should explain what, to, what the episode is going to be about. To, welcome to Pop Talks, everybody. <laughs> if you had listened to Ben's last episode, you know that we ravaged the Star Wars prequels, and we're here to <laughs> ravage some actually good movies now, because we're going to be talking about the original Star Wars trilogy. I don't think we're going to ravage them so much as just ravish be, them. <laughs> it's just, as they ravished us during our childhood. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Uh, I'm not editing that out. Oh, I, we probably should. Uh, yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. I like it. All right, I mean we'll see. It's yeah. just a number. <laughs> we'll just we'll see what we'll see what comments we get. It'll yeah. be the first time that uh, well the second time probably that we've gotten a comment. I yes. will not be the first three peat guest on the show. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that right now. Uh, well, not until uh, episode nine comes out and we have to talk about the sequel trilogy. Yes. Right. <laughs> Do you remember your first time experiencing Star Wars? <clears throat> tell us about your first time, Ben. I will tell you guys about my first time with Star Wars. I remember being this really rambunctious kid. My dad was driving me somewhere sometime. I couldn't have been more than five, six years old, maybe. And, like, to keep me quiet and entertained in the car, he just starts telling me the story of Star Wars. And, like, no way! Yeah, and the more he goes on, like, the more entertaining it gets. Like, oh, they have these cars called land speeders that never touch the ground. And they have robots that are super unrealistic. And there's this guy who's <laughs> dressed all in black with this iron mask. If you've seen any of those toys that... You know, Grandma made me take home from her house the other day that you know the guy I'm talking about because he had this great, like, rubber Kenner action figure series from the 70s. Nice. And I'm pretty sure that he actually made that car ride go longer than it should have. So he that could, he could tell yeah, me more about Star Wars? Because he could tell that I was enjoying it. That's so amazing. Much. Yeah. And so it really was amazing. It was a great story. And then I watched it. It's like, holy crap, this is even better than he, like, <laughs> made it out this to me. This makes Dad's story look like shit. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Dad. George Lucas just. As a filmmaker, leaves you in the desert, or at least did at that point in the, in the 70s. You, the paradigm may have shifted since then. But then I remember, like, I found out there were sequels, and I'm like, there's more? Mm -hmm. And, like, my parents were, you would use that to, like, get stuff out of me. Like, oh, mm -hmm. eat your vegetables, or we're not yeah. going to watch Empire Strikes Back. Because yeah, no. it was, like, a nightly activity or daily activity for you. Basically, yeah. Time. They're like, yeah, okay, nice. finish, your, finish your math homework, <laughs> and then it's off to see Princess Leia and Han again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that was, that was my first experience. It was there with me since I was, like, five years old and it has been a presence to some extent ever since then you were held hostage with star wars is what you're saying <laughs> it's the, it, yeah but but then i went full stockholm syndrome i went full yeah. patty hearst and i converted <laughs> okay. into loving it that's good do you remember your first oh i mean not specifically i'm sure it was on a vhs tape that had recorded it off of like cable television yeah and like with those uh, awkward abrupt stops where you like stop the vcr so that it edits out the commercials and you get more <laughs> the more streamlined thing yeah. yeah so uh yeah i don't think i saw them in order oh. uh, or at least i don't know that i like recall seeing them in order i might have seen a new hope first and like didn't know what it was or whatever and then yeah. later on saw return of the jedi I don't know that I saw Empire 
Like, I, I'm pretty sure, if, if I recall correctly, it was, for me, it was Jedi, A New Hope, uh, Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Um, which I just eventually, I started repeatedly watching all of them, and then I was like, oh, there's an actual, like, yeah. order to watch these in, and watch them in that order. Well, as, <clears throat> as kids tend to do, they yeah. just become obsessed with Star Wars, and it was, yeah. like, the greatest thing in your life mm-hmm, ever. Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I found out about it was, it was in third grade, um, and I had seen, I had seen Galaxy Quest that summer, <laughs> and I was like, and the, as the a breakout kid, hit of the summer. As a kid, you can't differentiate between Star Trek and Star Wars as well. I mean, like I knew yeah. they were different things, yeah. but I was just like, I'm gonna get into this sci-fi thing. <laughs> and then um, I remember being taken. I remember I I was the one kid that didn't want to go to Disneyland because I I don't like theme parks. I really just don't like theme parks at all. Like. And I haven't ever since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. But um, they took me to Disneyland. I was like, ah, oh, god damn it. Well, I mean, you, you, can, you have a sense for what's, you know, aimed at children, and you immediately push against that. Anything that, whether you're a child or not, <laughs> you've, you've never seemed to really dig on. Ah, mm. oh, that's for kids. That's stupid, because kids are stupid. No, I did <laughs> It's not a problem with Disneyland per se. I just don't like theme parks. In ge- I don't like the shitty food. I don't. I mean, rides are fun, but it's just it's just you. a I, headache. You know, I had a childhood story where I was like three or four years old. I was at Disneyland, and Dopey followed me around like all day. It was oh. terrifying, and yeah, yeah. He's... I to this day, if I see him, I'm like, okay, we're going home now. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. We, that's we, yeah. It's a little creeptacular. It is. To yeah. Hmm. So I totally get where that not yeah. liking theme parks comes from. I really completely. don't like theme parks yeah. at all. I mean, I, <clears throat> I like Universal Studios because that's all. You can walk around it for the most part. Like, it's not, like, standing in line the entire day. But, like, everything else, I can take or leave. Yeah. I really don't care. I haven't been to Disneyland since, like, eighth grade. It's a fair point. It is, I mean, if nothing else, it is a lot of walking. And that's, uh, it's enough of a deal breaker. It's legit. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a lot, it's a lot of walking for nothing. Not, le- I mean, not yeah. nothing exactly. At least, at least if I'm at a convention, I can maybe get, sit in a stall next to Mark Hamill. <laughs> <laughs> Near him. Don't go to yeah. the dark side, Mark. Hear him complain about his Minoc infestation. Oh, no. because <laughs> that's what he calls hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoids, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I went. Um, I saw Star. I went on the Star Tours ride, and I was like, "What the Dude, hell is this?" Star Wars. I mean, I'm not a big Disneyland goer either, but Star Wars is my favorite ride. Yeah, and, like always will be. Yeah, it is the best ride ever invented. Yeah, it's amazing. And I remember being like, "What the hell is this?" Mm. <clears throat> and I think we went there is like the end of the summer is here let's go to disneyland to you know end the summer right so then like a week later i went over to my grandpa's house after being picked up by him from school and he had the entire star wars trilogy on vhs so i got to see the like unaltered cuts oh yeah so i was like or as unaltered as they could be they they probably had something in them but they weren't like as fucked over as they are on dvd you know yeah. especially blu-ray han solo's uh, magical head dodge of green yeah. blaster shot but i remember watching the first <laughs> so convincing i remember watching the first one and just it was like you dropped acid you're like oh my god <laughs> i'm alive like where has this been all my life it's yeah. just the greatest it's just there's something different about star wars than anything else like the world seems so real when you're a kid you can't not love it in a way that like even I can't think of another franchise that you just become so absorbed in. Because yeah. every when you're a kid, you sort of attach on to little things in the mm. Star Wars universe. Because it seems so real mm. that you sort of you're like, well, I wonder where you know, I wonder what kind of drinks they serve at the cantina. And We're gonna get some blue milk over here, please. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get some green milk from a sea monster's tit. Oh, you went there. <laughs> Jason hasn't seen the Last Jedi yeah, yet. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Sounds well, amazing. It yeah, you will. Sort of amazingly bad. <laughs> It's pretty amazing. I love it. it you know, the, the thing about Star Wars for me is that when I, I was so young when I saw it, I was just like five-ish, that uh-huh. that became like my frame of reference for storytelling, just the way mm-hmm. it progressed, the way yeah. the characters interacted with each other, that that's like, I sort of unintentionally, subconsciously used that as a benchmark for whatever story I'm reading, listening to, yeah. watching mm-hmm. on TV. So it, yeah. it, it just meets all the archetypes and tropes of storytelling so well. That. It's so well constructed, yeah, which is amazing considering they were changing things every five minutes. Sure, yeah, which is, yeah. it's amazing that the 
the narrative is this smooth. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, and it's yeah the, the whole universe that they managed to build. It's very inhabitable. Like yeah. you said, like you get fascinated by these little things, and that's I mean that's got to be part of why there's so much like additional material. There, well, yeah. this, there's an entire extended universe of new material that exists out there, probably because it's just like you just pick something, pick anything. There's loads of stuff that you can just yeah. pick and write a novel or a series of novels about. Yeah, and that dude, that bald guy with the computer built in the back of his head, who's Lando Calrissian, sidekick sounds yeah. interesting. Let's give him a one shot or a, yeah. an entire novel. Yeah, right. Him. Exactly. Why, why, yeah, let's do a comic about his first time DJing. Oh yes. Why doesn't he like him? And why doesn't he like him either? <laughs> <laughs> Let's, let's have a 500-page novel on, on why, what's his name, Doc, Dr. Cornelius Evazon. Who just, the actor just died and, like, Twitter blew up about it. Oh, oh. really? That's his name, though, right? Cornelius Evazon? I <sighs> believe that that's his name. And it's Handa Babu is the other, I believe. What face? But, yeah. Yeah. It, the guy, Anus Tart, who gets his <laughs> arm chopped off by mm -hmm. Obi-Wan? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we've been talking about the first one, so, like, if we want, if, we're probably going to break this down movie by movie. Mm -hmm. Right. Which, can we just start off? Which one is your favorite of the original trilogy? If I'm going to be that guy, I'm going to be the one who, like, everyone is listening at home is going to hate me instantly and say, I enjoy Return of the Jedi the most. Up top. Uh, <laughs> it's it just, it's a really nice, definitive conclusion to the trilogy. Mm. It has Slave Leia in it, and Hell yeah. my wife still has promised me that she will be Slave Leia for Halloween. She lost that bet and has not carried it out yet, so... Funny, we're gonna have a talk when I get home. But it also has my just my favorite moment of the entire trilogy, which is Vader deciding I've had enough of being the lapdog of this evil old shit, and I'm gonna go save my son's <laughs> life. And it's like, wow, this has all been like a crazy redemption story. Yeah, and seeing Darth Vader and like knowing the things that he's done, seeing him be able to come back from that and like reconnect with Luke just feels really rewarding and yeah. heartwarming. I just that's love a, that scene. That's a, that's a really good point because like he's so evil the whole time. Like yeah. you don't see a glimmer of hope in him. You don't see whatever it is that Luke sees in him. Like during the movies, you're just like, no, this guy is just evil. Like he's an archetypal villain. Yeah. There's yeah, there's nothing good about him, but yeah, he does come back at the end there. I think, and, and John Williams really nails the score for that yes. scene as he does with pretty much every scene. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll not leave you. I've got to save you. I think my favorite is Episode Four. I just love yeah. that it started it all off. And uh, to be the pretentious douchebag film school art house student for one minute, I just love the filmmaking behind that movie. I love how cheap it is. Mm -hmm. And I don't, yeah. and it doesn't look cheap. I'm right. not calling yeah. it a cheap movie, yeah. but it was made for relatively cheap compared to the other ones. I love what they're able to accomplish on a relatively tight budget. Yeah, it's, it's, it's efficient. Mm -hmm. it's, it's frugal. Yes, it is a great just exercise in like the magic of filmmaking mm, yeah. and like kind of the sleight of hand, if you will, of mm. like the director as a magician. I sound like a totally pretentious <laughs> film school douche. No, if you were like up Empire Strikes Back's ass right now, yeah. then you might sound like a film school douche, but no, you just sound pretentious. I, I, I think it is worth noting that between the three of us, none of us have said that Empire Strikes Back is our favorite. Yeah. I love Empire Strikes Back. I, I can, I, I won't, yeah, I won't, I won't, like, argue with someone who says it's the best one or mm -hmm. anything. That's fine. I can, I can accept that. But yeah, just as far as enjoyment overall, it's like, it's like me with the Back to the Future franchise, though. Like, Back to the Future is one of the best films ever made, but I like Back to the Future better. So mm -hmm. that's, or Back to the Future 2 is superior to me because as a child, I wanted a hoverboard. That's, it's as simple as that. I just yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. So yeah, Slave Leia, uh, Luke 2.0, like, all these things are, Pretty sweet. It's kind of fun. And a, a new Death Star. Sure, why not? And the Emperor just so like malevolently evil. Ian McDermott yeah. doing like a Saturday morning cartoon mashup with a Shakespeare villain. It's mm -hmm. just so in enjoyable. <laughs> but I, I definitely appreciate what you're saying about episode four, Andy. It's and so it's so perfectly paced too. Yeah. There is not one moment yeah. in that movie that you are bored. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not even exaggerating. Like I am not bored for even one second in that film yeah. it is so perfectly paced anytime where it starts to run a little long boom alderaan gets blown up <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean too it's, soon right. it's a perfect film I, I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie. i think it is a perfectly constructed film from mm. top to bottom acting yeah. score you know cinematography pacing tone everything perfection mm. I love it. I think the, the point about the, the budget as well is really yeah. germane because if you like watch documentaries making ofs of how they did the episode four, it's like, wow, it's two or three dudes playing with really cheap looking models. Mm -hmm. If I had like a modicum of CGI training, I could do better with yeah. my like Lego yeah. film 
shooter set. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what's kind of inspiring about all these movies, too, is mm. it's like, look what they created yeah. from virtually nothing, mm -hmm. you know? As George Lucas likes to point out in those interviews, when people tell him, oh, we could never do what you did today. <laughs> yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> I was just, I was egging you on the whole thing. do the George Lucas impression again. <laughs> yes, you can. And he has been successfully baited. Yes. <laughs> look, I, I love my George Lucas impression, and I will break it out any time I can. <laughs> yeah. I uh, have no shame in my George Lucas impression. <laughs> so, Return of the Jedi is your favorite? Yeah, Jason? yeah, yeah, definitely. And and for the most of the reasons that I listed, like, I, yeah, I think probably the main thing was, yeah, like Luke is like a Jedi Knight in this one, and he can do all the shit. He's not, you know, a whiny teenager like he is in in A New Hope. Like, yeah. oh, I was gonna go get power converters. And like, Shut up. And annoying. I, I appreciate the fact that he's so like mature in this movie because he. It's, you know, it's kind of silly now like, yeah. when I watch it. But, but he, he has the opportunity to kill Vader, and he decides, no, I'm done with this. And the look of disgust on his face as he throws his lightsaber aside and says, mm -hmm. no, that's not the way Jedi work. It's mm -hmm. like, wow, that's not what you expect from an action movie. Like, he just goes in and kills the bad guy, and that's it. And mm -hmm. that's not what Luke does. That's yeah. not what he do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because, yeah, well, it, it opens with the whole, like, rescuing Han uh, sequence, and that's towards the end at least is just loaded with like explosions and you know pretty cool action sequences and stuff like that so oh yeah yeah i think i think it has just a, a it probably it has the most action of a uh, of the star wars original trilogy probably i think so and so. the space battle feels like it has the biggest scale to it mm -hmm. there's like three ish fight sequences going on at the end yeah intercut with each other mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. and really... it works yeah and, and the it, fact that it doesn't yeah. fall apart works. yeah mm -hmm. it ratchets up the tension and you feel like these three really disconnected things all feed into each other mm -hmm. narratively I, it i will say return of the jedi is one of my favorite shots in star wars history mm -hmm. where and this is really minute but i love it um it's on jabba's barge when they're fighting and boba fett lands and at this point lando has fallen off and he's hanging by the wire or whatever over the sarlacc pit and boba fett lands and i think he puts like a like a wire around luke or whatever and right, he cuts he it yeah he shoots like a grappling hook kind of dealy around and it wraps yeah. around him yeah. but it cuts from that to somebody shooting from the barge hitting the whatever boba fett's standing on mm -hmm. he I, and this is a super minute again but he falls lands and the camera is on him landing like and then it pans down over the lip and you see Lando hanging. Mm -hmm. I just love it because that whole action sequence is up against a blue screen for the most part. Mm -hmm. And then this <laughs> shot is just like, it puts you right back in the moment. Yeah. You're like, oh, okay, I believe they're on Tatooine right mm -hmm. now. Like, I just love, <laughs> it's like this one totally, it just, it helps you suspend your disbelief. Yeah. So any shitty green screen that you may catch in the background mm -hmm. is just, you don't even know. Yeah, yeah, it. exactly. You forget about it instantly because mm -hmm. it's like, oh, hey, a star like that. Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. So, have you guys seen these without the the changes? Yes, I have. Oh, yeah. my, I have the last issue of the old VHS tapes. Nice. nice. And actually, one of my students brought them to me at work one time because I work with like digital media and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have a VHS converter, and he also has the same films. And he's like, "Hey, you want to digitize these for me?" So, I'm like, "Yeah, I'd be happy to." And I have those files still mm -hmm. on my computer, mm -hmm. so I can. I now have the original last pre-new edition VHS issue on mm -hmm. it's glorious yeah I hope movie. you know Lucasfilm is coming for you now yeah right oh exactly. that's a fair point okay yeah Disney is coming for you I'm Kathleen, not editing that out either <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy is like yeah. sending the Star Destroyers after me what, what was your name again the Glenn uh, Hawkins yeah, I think it's was, um, uh, Andy Foreman it's yeah. A-N-D-Y <laughs> <laughs> that's the actual name on your birth certificate is Andy <laughs> this is random yeah <laughs> Andy Ben, and his middle name is Ben. Andy, Andy Ben Jenkins, Foreman. <laughs> Where'd you get a nickname like that? Well, seemed like Ben Jenkins, I guess. <laughs> Are we going to go through um, chronologically? or yeah. Sure. I'll go for that. All righty. Um, I do like them without the special edition at editions. I just I can't I have to get this off my chest before I talk about episode four. But what he has done to episode four is a fucking crime. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. It it is like it is like pissing on the Mona Lisa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it is like yeah. looking at piss on something. It is so bad. It would have been one CGI thing. Editions. It would have been one thing to go through and like clean up every shot. Just like that's fine. Yeah, yeah if you want if to it, watch the film or whatever. Yeah, basically, but we don't... what you're saying is a Criterion version. Yeah, I was going to say a Criterion. Four. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we, what we don't need is like Han Solo stepping on Jabba's tail and yeah. leave the Jabba scene out of it. You yeah. don't need it. Yeah, because then 
for the rest of because then for the trilogy um episodes one and two you always hear about this job of the hut and you're like oh who's that and then mm -hmm. it's the, the reveal is better besides seeing job of the hut and all of his crappy 1997 cgi glory i don't know yeah. if it's actually 1997 but it was shit. right around then i yeah. think it was I think, exactly that i think it was for the 20th sure. anniversary so yeah okay yeah then that's when they put it in and also it totally ruined what <laughs> oh i just made it Sex joke under my breath that would be too vile to, <laughs> okay. to put in here. Well, thank you for not making me edit. Mentioning 1997 in Star Wars reminds me of when Taco Bell had, like, a kid's menu with toys, and they had, like, they had promo toys for Star Trek, like, the, re the Star Trek Star Wars re-releasing yeah. all the movies and theaters. Were they good or were they lame? No, they were pretty lame. There was, there was like, a Bespin Cloud City that was suspended by a magnet. I have that. Yeah. Or, or I had that. Yeah. What yeah. I do still have is from Phantom Menace, when that came out, there was a Jar Jar action figure where he's got like, oh. his hands up in the air. And if you like push his hands down, like his tongue comes out. Oh, wow. And I just haven't gotten around to throwing it away yet. No, yeah. keep it. Yeah, Put you, it should, on the yeah. Dashboard you should of your keep car. it. And <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's, See, worth, that's worth holding on to. I feel, I feel bad yeah. saying this, but it's too bad you're married already because you could have put that on your wedding cake. <laughs> like, <if> you <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I. That's a good idea. Well, I mean, you know, there, when we renew our vows in yeah, a few there's, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, <laughs> when there's the, anniversaries and such. Yeah, when the 60th uh, anniversary of Star Wars comes around in about 20 years, <laughs> and you're renewing your vows, you could be like, oh, two birds with one stone. Uh, right? Maybe that's when you can get the old uh, Slave Leia thing taken care of as well. I mean, ideally it'll be before then, but <laughs> yeah. well, she'll at least have the costume in her closet at that point. Yeah. To whip out for special occasions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> For vow renewals? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I hope you're listening to this, Mrs. Jenkins. Yeah, Margo. Just, Margo also. I was just thinking, thing. like, what if you were dressed as Luke, though? Ooh. That's, I guess that wouldn't be quite appropriate. But, I mean, might as well go full Jamie and, like, Cersei Lannister then. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a golden hand on and make her do the pixie cut. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. So, you, then you would have to say, don't forget the droids. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's that scene, right? Yeah. And don't forget the droids. <laughs> I get pulled out of the sand by like magnets. I remember as a kid being like, "Oh, that's a bit impersonal." <laughs> he refers to them as the, the droids. droids. Like, I, I, just weird little thing that like stuck out to me. One of my viewings as the, a kid. The undesirables. Yeah, exactly. I was like, "We don't serve their kind here." It's like, oh, that's, that's a little impersonal. Yeah, <laughs> the droids. They're they're kind. I'm like, is that supposed to be like a race relations commentary? Or something, <laughs> yeah. George Lucas. Right. <laughs> don't get all up and talking. <laughs> Can I say, the best thing about episode four, by far, is Alec Guinness. Yeah. <laughs> How badly he did not want to be there. And, like, but, still, but he's and still gave it his all. Yeah, he's he such is. a professional in that yeah. movie. It's not like when you see um, like Ben Affleck as Batman, and he just wants to die. <laughs> like, you can just see in his yeah, eyes. Everything about wants... his presence says he wants to leave. Yeah, um, but Alec Guinness is such a true professional. Mm. Like, And he's he is the best part of this movie. I love the part where he first meets Luke Skywalker. And he's like, oh, he's looking for an Obi-Wan Kenobi. Do you know him? The look that comes over his face mixed with that little of John Williams' score. Fucking cinematic perfection right there. It's perfect. I love it. Like, just that little look on his face. And he's like, Obi-Wan, that's the name of my bird in a long time. Like, you're just, it just like, it hits you in the feels. You're like, oh, he's been living on this planet. Especially after, like, sitting through the prequels, love him or hate him, it, it gives context to mm. who Obi-Wan is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, I used to be young, Con. Did you not see you in McGregor? And now I look like <laughs> yeah. this. It's only 20 years later, too. Yeah. Keep I'm like, in, he's exactly. in his mid-40s. 20 years of living in Tunisia. Yeah, we're, that, apparently. we're doing a little bit of uh, X-Men, uh, 20th Century Fox X-Men movie, Ooh. time jumping. <laughs> Guinness, sir. Wait, so we're supposed to think that this McAvoy guy becomes Patrick Stewart? What? Guinness or McGregor. These timelines are so confusing. Deadpool references. Yeah. Ah, it wouldn't be a comic book podcast without Deadpool. Mm. Deadpool's awesome. <laughs> ah, Deadpool's great if you like Deadpool. The movie's good. The movie's uh, good. Deadpool's Dead, fun. Deadpool Max was really funny. Yeah. Dan the Daniel Way stuff is really good. Yeah. See. It's off topic, though. Yeah. <laughs> so the topic is pop culture. That is true. <laughs> Deadpool. There should always be a Deadpool episode in there somewhere. Well, Constantly yeah, I mean, mentioned. we're like maybe 10, 15 years away from all of Disney's properties converging anyway. So, yeah, we're going to have a Star Wars movie where the Fantastic Four are flying around in their giant boat. And, uh, well, by this time, they'll own DC, too. So <laughs> yeah, Give right, yeah, DC exactly. back to Marvel. <laughs> Give the rights back to Marvel. Yeah, the, the metal men will ride in on the backs of My Little Pony 
and but don't, yeah. don't you want to see Tin and Lead meet R two D two and see how that goes? What does <laughs> that crossover look like, man? I, it sounds like you're describing Ready Player One. That's what it sounds like you're describing. <laughs> the the Iron, Iron Giant is going to fight the Joker. <laughs> yes. Oh God. God, that's a short fight. So it's, so it's just like like I don't know, like the Wreck It Ralph or the. Uh... It's oh, just the all stars of yeah, yeah. All, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Not not to not no. To, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, not bad mouthing Wreck It Ralph, but like lots of crossovery kind of stuff with stuff well, that hasn't crossed over before. Hopefully, when the Iron Giant fights the Joker, it's the Jared Leto Joker. <laughs> Squat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm an idea. <laughs> and he's doing his little <laughs> damaged. Squat. Thanks for thanks for reminding me that the Jared Leto Joker exists. I had managed <laughs> oh, to, it's fine. I mean, to go for a while without thinking. I mean, oh. we had suffering during our prequel commentary, oh. so. Prequel yeah. Pieces. Right, right before Jared Leto Joker gets squashed by the Iron Giant, I want him to take his his smiling tattoo on his hand, but turn his hand upside down. <laughs> I do a frown. So, it can... <laughs> so it's a frown. That yeah. would be the, easily the funniest thing that the, this iteration of the character has done, or the most interesting <laughs> thing that this iteration. Of the character I'm available has done. to write yeah. anytime, Disney. Just let me know. Yeah. Or, or Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is Warner Brothers. making Ready okay, Player yeah. One. So DC, Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers whoever. Wants so to yeah, to Spielberg, write, if you want us to write Ready Player One yeah. too, we're we're ready to ready player two, <laughs> ready player two. <laughs> Is it? I hope it's um, I hope it's one of those uh, crappy direct to video movies. Like you know how they'd make Spielberg oh, yeah, movies yeah. and then they'd make really shitty yeah. direct to video sequels, or mm-hmm. like you'd see like Prince of Egypt four or whatever, and it'd be like <laughs> yes. produced by Steven Spielberg. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. And I just hope it's one of those. Which really means like, like looked at briefly by Steven Spielberg in an email. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had like a tel- he had a teleconference with the guys. Like, sure. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like what you're doing is interesting. It's probably mm-hmm. yeah. the story for It's actually just a recording of him saying that. Is this he a, just plays it. Philip like, oh, that sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, Phil. Uh, or Debbie. <laughs> yeah. Just a bad overtone. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. It's George that. Lucas doing the overtone. Yeah, what? that sounds like a really good idea, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> What a wonderful idea. Because <laughs> George Lucas is actually the personal assistant to Steven Spielberg. It's just in the, he's just at a desk outside of Spielberg's office. He's the Casey Affleck to Steven Spielberg's Ben. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> or the Dave Franco to Steven Spielberg's James. <laughs> Are they going to make a movie about Tell Me Why So? Because yeah. I would watch the hell out oh, of that. Oh, absolutely. Well, hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> You haven't yeah. seen those memes floating around the last year where he like, throws a football at Luke Skywalker's head? It's great. What? It's great. Yeah. I get the feeling this is just going to be the whatever episode. What are you talking about? We've got a topic. No. If you, okay. We can, let's go this back. Is, no, no, no. This is part of the magic. No, no, no. I know, but I'm totally fine with the tangents and then just <laughs> people being like, are they ever going to get back to talking yeah. about Star Wars? It says Star Wars in the description, but they're really not talking about it that much. I've wasted a click and 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. They teased us with Star Wars. What are they, Lucasfilm? Oh! <laughs> these, oh. Guys are, these guys are worse than Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, The Last Jedi. <laughs> I, I will say this. Just off, Well, we're already off topic. But mm. uh, you know the you versus the guy, uh, guy she tells you not to worry about memes? Yes. Where did it go there? There's a perfect one where it shows um, on the left, it's Luke Skywalker from Legends where he's like, got the Jedi Academy or whatever. And then on the right, it's Luke Skywalker from The Last Jedi. Mm-hmm. And it says you versus the better developed character they tell you not to worry oh, about. Oh, that's epic. Accurate. That is true. I'm much more interested in The Last Jedi version of Luke than the expanded universe version of Luke. Mm-hmm. Not saying it was necessarily handled better, sure. but I like the idea of him having rejected the Force and mm-hmm. living as a hermit. Old Man Luke. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that's not an awesome idea. <clears throat> Old Man Luke skin. <laughs> yeah. Old man Luke guy, Luke guy. Oh, yeah. Because they're doing the hot yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Should we get back to four? Yeah, I can talk we? about it. Sure. That? Yeah, I don't know. It was cheap and effective. It was cheap. It was cheap and effective. Yeah. Uh, Peter Cushing also stands out to me. I love Peter oh, yeah. Cushing in this movie. He's yeah. the second best part of this movie. Was... And this is a movie with uh, Mark Hamill and Terry Fisher <laughs> and Harrison Ford. Let me remind you, <laughs> in case you didn't know, Star Wars had them in it. Yeah. Were, were you already familiar with Peter Cushing before seeing that? Because I know you're big on the monster Hell yeah. movie and stuff. Okay. Hell yeah, I'd seen him in all the monster movies. I'm yeah. like, oh my god, mm-hmm. it's Peter Cushing. It's amazing. <laughs> the dark I'm Cushing movie. right now. Oh. Yeah, I was pushing for Cushing. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the girl said back in the 60s when he was a thing? <laughs> 60s? In the 60s, he was in like his 70s. Yeah, dude. I was going to say. <laughs> that's, that's still a about, thing. That's still you're talking thing. about like that's in the, the 20s. 20s, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. He was doing his vaudeville act, and yeah, all the ladies were swooning. Pushing yeah. for Cushing. Pushing for Cushing. <laughs> yeah. Um, he was from Portland. 
Yeah, he's a mm. great part. Did you know he had to wear his slippers during the filming of this? Because the boots they gave him were too tight, so he convinced George Lucas to just shoot him mm-hmm. from the waist up most of the time, so you he didn't have to wear them. You know who doesn't have a problem wearing boots? Who? CGI Tarkin from Rogue Ro- Ro- One. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> At the trough of the uncanny valley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of a line he has from that movie. I think he really one. Yeah. He also has, you may fly when ready. Does he say that? In <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm pretty yeah. sure they just rip the sound bite from the you original. You may fly when ready. Yeah, he says that exact line. I was like, oh, well played. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta maximize that recycled content. Yeah, <laughs> right. I will say this. They did a phenomenal job bringing him back. Sure. It looked like him. It I looks better could... than Jabba did in the... <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The CGI version of him with Han stepping on his tail and shit. That's true. The first shot that they put of him in Rogue One, which is like a reflection of his face in the mm-hmm. glass. I wish they'd done that the whole time now, because that would have made it like more uh, yeah. mysterious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As opposed to him turning around and you're like, oh, no, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Valley. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that I mean, alive. that would have been kind of great if they would have done that for the whole movie, and then at the end of it, he turns around from the window, and you see there's just Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> you may fire when ready. <laughs> yeah. when... I've got to have more Death Star. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Boys, <laughs> you, may, you may fire when ready. I kept that uncomfortable Death Star plans <laughs> up my anus <laughs> for years. I kept, I kept that, uh, what was it, the hard drive or the, the little disc they had yeah. in Rogue One? I kept this uncomfortable piece of technology up my anus for 12 years. <laughs> Christopher Walken <laughs> makes everything better. <laughs> and now, Princess Leia, I give the disc. <laughs> and then it's like a, no but then you see the hand come up and then as the hand grabs it it the circle fades in so it's like dun, 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 and then the opening credits yeah or the end credits, end credits. if we're doing like this whole solo kenobi movie thing can we actually do like a tarkin movie with oh, christopher hell yeah. please <laughs> <laughs> let's do this <laughs> i'm in i was told this was a tim burton movie <laughs> I threw my hair out and everything. I was told to act weird. I said, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Do we want to talk about The Empire Strikes Back now? Yeah, we probably should. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we're all in agreement this is the best of the trilogy? <laughs> it's, I'm just it's, I mean, yeah, I'm it's, it's, I think it's, uh, it's definitely the most popular. Yeah. Or, or it's popular to say it's the best one. Yeah. I don't think it's the best one. I, you I know, wouldn't argue with somebody. As, as far as personal enjoyment goes, um, it's not my favorite. A uh, little bit because it's like uh, the cliffhanger ending. Eh, it's, I, I like a, I like a story to completely resolve yeah. if yeah. it can. It's pretty ballsy though. Yeah, I mean they make it work. Well, I guess it, yeah, it, yeah, it, it works fine. It's yeah. but yeah. of the if you compare the three of them, the first one and the last one all tell a complete story. You can watch them on their own. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, Empire Strikes Back is like, oh, there's more yeah. <laughs> that they didn't show me. Yeah. And I get part of that is like the Saturday morning cartoon mm. soap opera space well, opera. Well, it was supposed to be a mm-hmm. serial. Which they did that, that out the fucking window pretty quickly. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> they, they really did, yeah. But I, that aspect of it definitely comes off in Empire Strikes Back. But I think the one thing Empire does that I really, well, two things that I appreciate. And the first is bringing Billy Dee into the Star Wars oh, franchise. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the second is turning Darth Vader from like this throwaway cartoon bad guy into like someone with presence and mm-hmm. the most terrifying villain that on screen yeah watch. there's a reason that to this day darth vader's at the top of all the like great cinematic universe villains mm-hmm. and yeah. he's he's always number one it's because of the ways to develop an empire mm-hmm. oh yeah he's perfect in that movie especially the little tease where they show you with the uh, all the scars on his, the back of his head but they don't show you yeah. anything else oh, that's so good mm-hmm. that is awesome mm-hmm. and i oh and they also show you um how he can force choke somebody from a long way away because <laughs> he's on the He's on the video conference oh, thing yeah. or whatever, and the guy's like, Ooh. He's web saying that yeah. guy. Or Which was the, uh, <laughs> the cheapest effect they could have possibly done. They could have just been like, all right. <laughs> Again, being frugal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they could just, all right, pretend you're dying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of when they turn Doomsday Clock into a movie, and Mime is using his powers. You know, they don't have to actually have any props or visual effects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they did reading didn't... Doomsday Clock? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's amazing. Oh, mm-hmm. my God. When I, I didn't think the guns were real, then when they were... Mm-hmm. Spectacular. They're you just real. Gotta believe. And they're spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's Terry, that. Terry Hatcher. What's the chick's name that goes with mine? I forget. Uh, Mary Marionette. Marionette. Okay. Yeah. Terry Hatcher can play Marionette. Yeah. There you go. All right. Hey, she has a DC. Um, oh yeah, TC pedigree. Yeah. yeah. She's Lois Lane for four seasons. Well, yeah. sure. And she uh, she was in Supergirl. 
Oh yeah, that's true. Mon El's mom with Kevin Sorbo, I think, was his dad. Mom El. <laughs> Mon El, yeah. I think that's yeah, yeah, that's who they played. But yeah, Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> I, I, I just if he shows up, I can't not watch. <laughs> I mean, I feel that way about Terry Hatcher, so. Yeah, see, there you Definitely. go. <laughs> that, Definitely. That kept you reasons. on Supergirl for, like, an extra season and a half, because you're like, Kevin Sorbo's going to be on it. Yeah, right? I've heard rumors. Hercules is back. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you going to watch Krypton? I just need to ask. Are you going to watch Krypton? I mean, I'm probably, strictly out of professional obligation, going to have to give it a go. But I also, I mean, I watch terrible things sometimes. Like, That's I don't true. just, I, 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 yeah, I, I do have taste, but I don't always indulge it. Sometimes I just watch some of the worst things out there. So that's it's on TV tonight. Snakes on a plane. You know what? I'm not going to change the channel. Yeah, right. Some of the 2005 Poseidon remake. Oh. <laughs> I just thought of the worst thing I could possibly uh, see. Unless it's the worst. <laughs> unless it's just bottom of the barrel for you. Well, no. The, the absolute bottom of the barrel film of all time is Catwoman. Sure. That is yeah. the worst film I've ever Fair. seen in my entire life. Yeah, it yeah, makes yeah. me physically yeah. ill to watch it. Mm. It's that bad. Like, and not because I'm like, look what they're doing to Catwoman. Sure. It's yeah. just as a film, it's so poorly oh, constructed. Yeah. You don't it have to like Catwoman so... to see that Catwoman is the worst. <laughs> it looks so yeah. ugly. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's just the worst thing in the history mm. of the world. <laughs> so Star Wars. So yeah. So now I want somebody to to digitally alter the scene where they show Vader from behind with the scars on the back of his head, but before his mask goes on, he turns around and it's Christopher Walken. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> no, Luke, I am your father. I'm a very... Search your feelings. You know this to be true. <laughs> You've failed me for the last time, Admiral. <laughs> you are in command now, Admiral Fiet. <laughs> Battlefield promotion. Mm-hmm. Get promoted by Christopher Walken. Perhaps he could be, sir. <laughs> what about Yoda in this movie? Yoda's amazing. Oh, Yoda! This yeah. is the most that I enjoyed Yoda. This is the best Yoda you've ever seen. Which mm-hmm. makes him in the prequels that much weirder and more disappointing, where he's like trying to be like this badass, mm-hmm. and it's like, no, just go back to being like a crazy talking frog. Yeah, this was definitely a breakout role for Miss Piggy. Yeah, um, <laughs> she did a great job. It was what like three hours in the makeup chair every day before shooting. Yeah, my all nurses. Hiya. <laughs> mine, mine. <laughs> how does how does R two D two? Oh, because he had his memory wiped. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was gonna say, how does R two D two not not remember who Yoda is? <laughs> it's like a well, maybe just confused him for Yaddle. Yeah, that's true. Oof. <laughs> I saw a, I saw a fucking video on YouTube that said, like, why Yaddle is too dangerous for the Jedi Order, and I just went, like, I'm like, this is everything wrong with Star Wars fandom right here. <laughs> like, in one video. <laughs> Every, anytime you see one of those YouTube videos where it's, like, a 20-minute explanation of, like, a minor character or yeah. completely insignificant plot point, it's like... Why the uh, why the droid on Mustafar dropped it, the magma pot it was holding when Anakin jumped on it. And it's, like, ten minutes long explaining it. <laughs> yeah, and it's all the Illuminati... Yeah, crazy, crazy. yeah, and then, and then and reptilians. inevitably the guy's like, and Star Wars is just an SJW machine of bullshit, oh, <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy doesn't respect the oh, fans. Uh, uh, I mean, true and true, so. <laughs> Of course, yeah. it's all a liberal conspiracy, and, yeah. all of it. Never mind that they're maybe just trying to do something slightly different. And I mean, they're not trying to do anything different, they're trying to make some money. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes you make a billion dollars on a movie, and sometimes you make two billion dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's uh, strikes and gutters, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how Solo turns out. It'll only make $800 million. Right, only. yeah. I'm yeah. still looking forward to that. Dude, Solo looks fucking good. It I'm looks not entertaining, lie. yeah. I mean, it, it, Han Solo looks like the least interesting part of it still, but... Okay. Which I mean, is fine. I will pay... Every cent in my bank account to see Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian. It's going to be, the, yeah, that to has see, to be amazing. I, There's no way yeah. it cannot. Yeah, to see freaking Woody Harrelson in a Star Wars movie, to see Amelia Clark in a Star Wars movie. Mm-hmm. Like, any and all of these things sound good to me. Yeah, and it doesn't have to blow all our minds for me to be satisfied. Like, well, That's yeah. the thing is, can I just say, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, sorry. go for it. But can we stop acting like Star Wars is so fucking sacred? <laughs> that really pisses me off is when people are like, oh, well, you know, they're shitting on the Star Wars legacy. I think we said this before, but we're like, in a fucking franchise where the Phantom Menace exists, like, you can't say it's not. It's, it's not infallible. Yeah. yeah. Like, the infallible menace. <laughs> I think the problem is putting Star Wars up on this, like, huge pedestal, like, kind of hinders the growth of the franchise as a whole. Mm-hmm. And that's why all the Star Wars movies feel exactly the same. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So and it's well, like, well, go ahead. I think some of it's, uh, is the whole, is, uh, I think a lot of it is the nostalgia oh. factor. Oh, it's, yeah. You know, it's, it's the, it's the Michael Bay Transformers principle, where it's like, well, that was not something I really enjoyed, and I feel like they kind of, uh, molested my, you know, fond memories, fond childhood memories, mm. uh, you know, like, him doing TMNT and stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of people that really like these franchises, and he just kind of did his own thing with them, which is fine, and I think enough people enjoyed them that it's not, you know, super, it's, it's not criminal, but it's, mm. you know, not what a lot of actual fans of the original franchise of the source material that he was using would want, so they're resistant to that. So I think in the same way that all of us have really fond childhood memories with Star Wars, I think other people have even stronger feelings that way, and you're yeah. you're messing with something that is sacred to them in you know in their in the scope of things that they've enjoyed their yeah, whole lives. Yeah, but just acting like everything that comes out in this franchise sucks after Return of the Jedi or even Return of the Jedi. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, because he walks which was yeah really that's not even yeah yeah after return of the jedi is not necessarily the line that's drawn by some fans yeah but i mean people act like it's just this like infallible franchise or there's yeah. this like sacred thing i'm like what's wrong with just having a little bit of experimentation in it for fuck's sake last year we had the 40th anniversary of this thing can mm. we try something new yeah i have no problem with trying things new with star wars you know why those original three movies are always going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. You can't, oh, Kathleen Kennedy cannot come into my home and like rip the memories from my brain. No, well, I mean she works I for mean, Disney, she, so she that really be might be able to do. Do not test her. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. You know, I can see Kathleen Kennedy like in her Darth Vader armor walking into a room and like, <laughs> what is like reading my master? <laughs> yeah, and a hologram of Walt Disney's frozen head is yeah. like <laughs> telling her what to do. I feel like they might have built a cybernetic body for him by now. That's so Walt Disney's really there, possible. and he's like, look at Boston Dynamics. I think they've got a body for him by now. Right? I see him it's as... got a few Gatling guns in the shoulders. That's, just, that's a fair point. But I see him as like a Supreme Intelligence Marvel oh, Comics thing. Oh, okay, like, yeah. I can do more as a head in a jar. as like just the, the grand brain behind this empire. He's, than could yeah, he's sort of... Maybe he's, got, maybe he's got like sort of a MODOK set up where he's got like a little Ooh, yes. levitating platform that the jar his head is in floats around. So he has mobility still. Yeah, MODOK was... Mobile organisms designed only for cash, spelled with a K. Ooh, <laughs> brilliant. brilliant. Or no, you can just change it to a C and it's still MODOK. Oh, that's a fair, fair point. point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then the MODOK people would normally have like Native American written on their name. But even Disney has better lawyers than they do, so. Ooh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I, <laughs> I will say she probably can come to your house and steal your memories. They do have that much money. Yeah, they might. Just lobotomize it. They yeah. might even be able to do it remotely. Can't spell lobotomized without lobot, which is another high point of Empire Strikes Back. Nice segue. That's right. Nice bringing it back. Mm-hmm. Right. Did you think Han Solo was dead when you first watched this? Like, when you first, first, well, not you, because you saw Return of the Jedi Yeah, first, exactly. No. Did you think Han Solo was dead? <laughs> no. I mean, I still had the suspense, because I'm a kid, and I'm like, oh no, he's someone I care about. But, like, yeah. unless, I, even then, I was smart enough to know, unless you see someone die, then they're going to come back to normal. See, I remember watching it and being like, surprised that that was the ending yeah. i was like there's no way they're not gonna bring it oh yeah back. especially because mm, i had the vhs i had the vhs copies and you look at it and on return of the Jedi, right yeah so you're like, there's right, box well. art for this yeah you're like oh well that fucking ruined it. <laughs> kids these days are uh, you know children are not gonna know what box art is yeah in streams so well, it's a box <laughs> yeah <laughs> physical media well they're I, they're gonna know what boxes are because kids these days love unboxing videos that's true oh, it's you're... really weird to think about but I guess it makes sense because you think about like what's their favorite thing, uh, opening presents, and then if you get to just watch a video of kids opening presents, what's or what's essentially presents. There's a reason that that kid opening his Nintendo 64 <laughs> on Christmas Day is still a meme, mm-hmm. and it's not just because of his monologue. It's because we love getting things. Yes. Up now on Pop <laughs> Like I said, folks, I'm not coming back for, <laughs> yeah. for, for repeat, so I might as well get it all out of my system while I'm here. Yeah. And you, were, were you setting up to introduce the N64? Kid, no. as our, as our <laughs> guest he on comes out of the back room. <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. He strangles me with an N64 <laughs> controller cord. No, I was been here gonna, the whole time. I was gonna say, like, up next on Pop Talks, we're unboxing the Star Wars Smuggler's Bounty giveaway box. Oh, is that it's a real gi- thing? I don't fucking it know. Sounds some, it sounded authentic. That was well there's done. There's some yeah. Star Wars giveaway box, or there's some there Star be, Wars yeah. um, gift box that you can send away for. And I'm sure it's like, wow, we've got a radical Funko Pop in here. <laughs> Boba Fett. Oh. oh, and look, here's some stickers with Princess Leia on them. This was worth $69.99. Uh, but, the, but the Boba Fett is like in his, uh, his Hoth gear, because sure, why not? Let's just leave one blank white. 
Oh. They just call it Hoth Gear. That it makes they didn't want collector's to put in, edition. Yeah. Super valuable. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to put in the extra 10 cents to paint it. Yeah. We've also got this amazing replica of Bespin Cloud City suspended by a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> never mind that it says Taco Bell on the bottom of it. This is a brand new product. That's never a mind that it bin. <laughs> we didn't never just mind. find these at a thrift store or something. No, never mind that it has pieces of Ben Jenkins' wedding cake crusted to the bottom <laughs> of it. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, God. That's, oh, that makes even more sense for a wedding cake than the Jar Jar thing does. Oh, because it's white? Cause, yeah. yeah. It's true. <laughs> So we want to move on to Return of the Jedi, or do we have any more? Okay, Empire. Can we talk about Yoda. Empire. Um, is oh, Luke getting favorite. his hand cut off. Oh, oh go ahead, yeah. Go ahead. No, Luke. No, that that deserves yeah. mention more than this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love Luke getting his hand cut off because I literally it does make you as a kid go like, what the fuck? Yeah, because yeah, you don't know about cybernetic limbs yet. Yeah, and there's, yeah, there are stakes to this thing. Yeah, yeah eventually that's... when you grow up, you learn about cybernetic limbs, but as a child, you don't know about. Yeah, them, and so. also when you grow up and you learn about masturbation, you're like, oh, was that his hand? Yeah, like was that oh, the hand? Oh, he used? Was that his hand? Was that the hand that he? Used? uses or is he still good like yeah. maybe know. i mean he Scott he has force. enough of control of the force that he doesn't yeah. get a hand necessarily i don't know dude. i know but I, I don't know if i'd want to risk it if i were still in like the the, oh, the novice stages? stage yeah like it rips you know? off right i mean you never know what of the things that could go wrong um yeah. there are many <laughs> there are there are myriad you, right? Flo- oh. yeah flowing out you, of you, you guys can't see the gestures andy's doing right now <laughs> flowing they're, they're really <laughs> emphasizing the point he's trying to make here mm. yeah <laughs> feel the force Flowing through, with the blast shield down. How am I supposed to be able to? See? How am I supposed to jerk off with the blast shield down? Oh, wow. I feel like the blast shield is supposed to be like the the lesson learned. Like if you do this too much, this is what your world is going to be like. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Touch once a night, Luke. Once a night. <laughs> That's. It's Any more of... than that, and it ceases to be special. <laughs> Make it a part of your shower routine. No more. <laughs> British accent. That's a good touch. <laughs> I think the last, the last thing I want to say about this... Um, about Luke Skywalker journey. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's much more I can say about that. Just about the Empire Strikes Back in general. is. Um, I love that scene at the beginning where you've got all those Star Destroyers just like swarming and all of a sudden something casts a shadow over them and it's like an even bigger Star Destroyer. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That like scares me and impresses me more than a Death Star just because it's like... It's so big. Yeah, and this thing is clearly designed... To kill and mm. do nothing else. So. Yeah. yeah, it's it's all out of bubble gum. Yeah, <laughs> I love Hoth. I'm Hoth here is to such a great wipe out little scum. I'm and you chew to... bubble gum and I'm all out of gum. <laughs> that was a good imitation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I try. Hey, you're not the only one with the gift. Um, <laughs> you know, there is one sh- another pretentious shot I love in these films. There's the part where they take down the ATAT walker. It's the first time you see it get taken down and it falls on itself and then they come and blast it and it blows up yeah. and then it cuts to a bunch of Hoth soldiers running and they have obviously blue screened snow speeders go yeah. by above them but the I've seen this movie a lot but those soldiers look up at the snow speeders flying above them at the exact perfect moment yeah. like I don't know how yeah they got that shot. Like, they put that together. I mean, I'm sure special effects can do wonders, even in 1980. But... Uh, well, they, they built a real snow speeder and just, you know, they blew it up all over <laughs> their heads. And it's, yeah, it's simple as that. It's really actually but not as difficult as you might I... think. George Lucas got a bigger budget for the second one, I'm assuming, because <laughs> of how, like, massively profitable the first one I, was. I love that shot, though. Mm. It just puts you in the moment of, oh, you're like, oh, my God. I've, I, they're just, there's shots in these movies that are mm. so well-constructed that you're like, oh, I'm, I'm in this. This mm-hmm. is awesome. And it's more awesome than the best CG. It is. Yeah. It's it's it feels lived in. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's one of the problems with the prequels. By having everything be so pristine and flawless, it just feels like, no, this is fiction. Yeah. yeah. Well, this feels like Star Trek: The Next Generation <laughs> more than. Yeah. I mean, nothing against. That's that's the purpose TNG. of Star Trek: The Next Generation, though, is to make it feel like this other world. Yeah. Like this is what humanity has become. You're supposed to feel like you can live in Star Wars. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, TNG is something to aspire to, where everybody's really nice to each other and everything's you know, shiny yeah, and clean. There's no racism. Yeah, they, they serve all race droids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they, they serve, serve droids. All Klingons here. Yeah, um, I also love the the battle on Cloud City where Luke is fighting him, and then he's up against the window, and Vader just lowers his lightsaber, and then you, all this shit just starts flying yeah, at him. I'm great. like, it's fucking badass. I know dude. Vader just looks like a freaking statue there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
with, if not for the breathing, you wouldn't know he's alive at all. It's I really know, just, it's like, amazing. This, he's a force of nature in this mm-hmm. movie. There's one weird part in this movie, mm. but where there, well, there's a lot of weird parts in this movie. It's a Star Wars movie. There's what? weird shit in every one of these movies. When Luke and Leia kiss? Oh, like... that's true. They kiss twice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that the makes second it... time there was tum. So. <laughs> oh, I'm just oh. kidding. I don't think anybody's verified that. No. Okay, Rich Fisher can't verify that. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Mark Hamill's never gonna tell. <laughs> <laughs> um. There's one shot where he is fighting on Cloud City, again, and it's in the um, carbonite freezing room or whatever, the carbonite chamber, yeah. and he kicks Luke off the stairs, mm-hmm. and then it cuts to Vader, and he just flies over the stairs. Like, oh, he puts yeah. his arms out, and mm-hmm. he just flies over the stairs. Superman's over to him. Yeah. Nobody nobody ever complains about Sith, or Sith flying, <laughs> but somebody force projects, and oh my god, it's the end of the franchise. Yeah, right. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what I'm talking about. I didn't say I who know, or what I'm or what kidding. was going on. You're talking about jerking off using the Force, right? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Projecting <laughs> out into the world one's essence. Yeah. <laughs> it means uh, it means so much to him. All of his friends have gone. <laughs> <laughs> He's got too much of his father in him. Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm afraid of. Oh, really? I hate to cut you off there, Andy. Uh, <laughs> Good night, going? everybody. Looks like I'm going nowhere. <laughs> this door shuts. <laughs> this is going to be the whole episode. It's just how people in Star Wars masturbate. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's no magical force jerking my dick. <laughs> oh, boy. A hokey religion. Or not. Nothing compared a hokey to a nice religion. ass blaster at your side. <laughs> there's no uh, hokey religion and uh, ancient swords are no match for a good for a good pocket pussy kid. <laughs> He just says, I mean, no if there's, we've established that there's a massive extended universe. It's explored many aspects of the Star Wars universe. I don't know that this is one that's been well, explored this is in my a official... Outside uh, of fan fiction. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's plenty on the internet mm. you can find. Yeah. There was a great... Well, well, no, not great. There was a movie that came out a few-ish years ago um, called Zack and Mary Make a Porno. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one. Kevin, one of the Kevin Smith ones, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's about them making... Seth Rogen, Elizabeth Banks. Yeah, mm-hmm. Elizabeth Banks is the reason I watched it. Nice. And, <laughs> and it was a, about them making a Star Wars-themed porn movie called Star Wars, so mm-hmm. that is my sexual frame of reference it's, for Star Wars. Yeah, it's crazy low budget and everything. Like, yeah. they're making it, what, like, in the back of the, the just, coffee shop he works like at or something Star like that? Wars. It's crazy low budget. Yeah. <laughs> they stayed true to it. They mm-hmm. did. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, all of his friends have gone. <laughs> Jeez. So, uh, speaking of the snow speeders, did Andy? You might have been too young. Do you remember um, Micro Machines toys for Star oh, Wars? Oh yeah. Did you ever? Do you have yeah, any of the ships? I probably still have some yeah. at my parents' house. Yeah. I, I don't know. A lot of the a lot of the ship designs uh, are kind of cool. I, I dug the snow speeder quite a bit. That was a good one. Oh, oh, the snow speeder was good. Um, um, the Super Star Destroyer stands out to me. The yeah. Mon Calamari like cruiser from Empire Strikes Back, just because it's like this weird bubbly looking thing. Yeah. Those are really nice. I love, um, when I was into Star Wars for the first time, that Christmas, so following, I missed have seen in September, so, mm. that Christmas was a Star Wars themed Christmas, mm. as you can well imagine. One might even call it a Star Wars holiday special. True. <laughs> very true. That's gonna, just as a preview, that's gonna be a whole commentary someday, people. Oh, yeah. The three of us are going to watch the holiday special and do a commentary. But, never... Agreed to that in my written agreement to be on the show. Actually. I told you you were coming back for a third time. No. <laughs> okay. That's That'll okay. be our Christmas special. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to do a Christmas special. and Yeah. I don't know if I can wait that long. <laughs> I really want to watch that again. It's horrible. <laughs> Why? Why? I, I, I love that but special. You, but your Star Wars Christmas. Yes. Sorry. I got a snow speeder for Christmas, and you could open it up. And you could put two figures a... in, and they had the little um, cannon in the back where you could shoot the harpoon, yeah. and it was just about the greatest day of my entire life. That's, that's I think that's one I had too. Was it from Target? I don't know. Because mine mine had like Target exclusive on it or whatever. Oh well, I don't know if mine was a fancy as all that, but you yeah, I'm pretty sure. You weren't sure yours was a surplus snow speeder, and they just slapped the Target exclusive sticker on. There you go. Yeah. I just had... <laughs> one Christmas, I got a. ATAT, and that was pretty much the greatest Christmas of my life. Mm-hmm. And I gotta be honest, when Last Jedi came out, I did ask for the new Walker in Lego form that's in Animal Troops' house. Ooh. That is proudly my Christmas. 
You mm-hmm. got it? Mm-hmm. I did get it. Did you build it? I did build it. Nice. Little it's pieces. It's in the back of the keyboard. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. It looks like a big old Jedi thing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> You'll understand once you see The Last Jedi. It's all I ever hear these days. <laughs> Just from family and friends. Just from people passing me on the street. You'll yeah, understand one day. Uh, yeah, I saw, you see the last I saw the postman the other day. He's just like, hey, you'll understand one day. I'm like, oh man, what is in my mailbox right now? <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars fan fiction? I think all of his friends have gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, from Andy Foreman? What the fuck? <laughs> No, he sees that, he puts it back together, puts it back in the mailbox, and runs. Oh, because yeah. he knows the explosion. Is. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure I, if anything, I just uh, put it in a Ziploc bag and take it to the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what is this copy of the Thrawn trilogy doing? <laughs> <laughs> I also dug the, uh, as for, uh, back to ships, I dug the A-Wing. The A-Wing is freaking awesome. Beautiful. I feel like it's a little overlooked, it's but yeah, it's a really cool ship. <laughs> I saw, so, and this is... Something that really feeds into Andy's point about like Star Wars nerds overdoing everything. But I saw a post. I didn't click on it, but I saw a post online once that was like, "Why the A-wing starfighter ruins absolutely everything for the Rebel Alliance." I'm like, "What?" It's time to move on with your life. Yeah. I, okay. I just want to make clear. I don't not like Star Wars fans. I'm saying when star certain when Star Wars tr- fans yeah. get too <clears throat> invested in. Here's the best way to. Star Wars is fun, and if you're not having fun with it, just let it go. Yeah. When you just, turn it into like a. Seinfeld diner conversation where it's just George no, and Jerry like fun, overdoing it. No, but that's the fun part of it though is when you're doing it in a fun context. In a fun sure, when yeah, you're yeah. letting it ruin your day though. Yeah. Because there's there is so much fucking Star Wars shit out there that if this was the end all be all like hobby of your life, even if say, oh, Catalyst comes out and it's fucking horrible, it's a terrible book, then just put it down and go read another one. Yeah. You know why? Have you been to the Barnes and Noble Star Wars section? You could read these for your whole life and never read all of them. Mm-hmm. You know and, I mean? Andy will mail you personally at his expense a copy of the Thrawn trilogy <laughs> for you to enjoy. I will not do that. Uh, verbal contract is binding in the state of California. Sorry, Andy. That's well, that's why we're all shit. taxed all the way to high heaven. Yeah. Yeah. A Thrawn tax. Thrawn tax. <laughs> imperial, Thrawn tax. imperial tax. Yeah. Andy Thrawn tax. <laughs> that's going to be the title for this episode. Andy's Thrawn tax. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Andy's Thrawn tax. That sounds like a, like a Star Wars creature that you ride around. Luke, bring the Thrawn taxes around. We have to milk them. It's clearly just a dog that they put horns on. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm doing it well, super low budget. Like, yeah. True to the original. True to Star Wars. Is yeah. It, is it is it Legacy. dog? Is it like that dog that Spock holds in the original Star Trek? Yes, it's just exactly like, like that. One like unicorn horn or whatever. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Super low budget. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Do we want to start on Return of the Jedi? I think we should get in. Yes, Probably yes, get in I there. think so. I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's it's my favorite. We and, all might like it. Yeah, <laughs> it gives Slave Leia and that put in basically an entire generation of young boys into puberty. Pretty Look, sure I don't want to sound like a complete pig, but when I was a kid in the same third grade era of Star Wars fandom, I got the Star Wars coffee table book. And in it was a picture of Carrie Fisher in the Slave Leia costume. And that just started it all. <laughs> it was just from then on, I was racing to the to get Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. Because my dad gets Sports Illustrated. So when the swimsuit uh-huh, edition comes uh-huh. around, you have to make it to the... It's mine now. Yeah, I mean... It started it all. Sometimes you get a Sears catalog, but you don't rush to grab that and <laughs> flip to the lingerie section. <laughs> <laughs> There's something sacred about the swimsuit edition. That's that's fair. <laughs> Speaking of childhood like nostalgia and all of my friends leaving. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I, I think you left them when you took off running for the mailbox to get a hold of that magazine. Uh, <coughs> Barry Allen looked like a slacker. You were <laughs> off the races when that issue came out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it means so much to him. And all of Andy's friends have gone. <laughs> Choking on water. Choking on the years of pain and misery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I love this movie. Mm-hmm. And I think the strongest part is the tattooing Sarlacc pits in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think any scene... Yeah, that's definitely a standout. I really loved that as a kid, and I still love it to this day. Uh, I think any scene with Vader and where the Emperor stands out to me, because yeah. it's, you know, for years you go that's from... The scene. Jedi. Yes. It's cool. 
race. Strike me down in your journey to the dark side will be complete. Whenever friends get mad at me this day or I hear someone say, I hate you, I say, your heat has made you powerful. <laughs> I mean, they just, like, it totally diffuses the situation and makes them look foolish. That's the like, perfect you know, way to do it. It really is. When you're getting sued. This! I hate this man! <laughs> powerful. <laughs> your Honor. I didn't want to get internet famous for opening an N64 with this guy calls me names on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate him. <laughs> oh my god. Let the hate flow through you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only now at the end do you understand. Feel the hate flowing. <laughs> oh, he's doing the masturbation gesture again. Back just FYI. Yeah. Keep in mind, my masturbation gesture is just my hands being yeah, just swung, sort of sweeping, yeah. just sweeping out. That's my that's my gesture. Yeah, like so. Moses parting waters in Ten Commandments, or, the, <laughs> yeah. or Yen Sid in Fantasia, like sweeping the waters aside. Yeah, yeah me sweeping my door shut <laughs> 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 using the force. Click. <laughs> just, just. A little bit. Uh, childhood, Star Wars, did anybody ever try to harness the Force? No. Is it just... It's well, just a, little, a little. I mean, I'm, I, I, no, I'm not gonna... I tried to. You don't, you don't have to accommodate me, guys. It's fine that I was the only one that was like, oh. I think if I just concentrate hard enough... Like, this is before... I had never seen mall rats or anything, so it wasn't just like, oh, well, that guy can do it. <laughs> well, I, I can actually kind of one-up you on that, because... One time I got into a fight with somebody on the playground, again in third grade, and I tried to use, like, the Jedi move. Not the Force, because I know it didn't exist, but I tried to use, like, the Jedi moves that, like, Anakin and Obi-Wan were using. It didn't work well. It didn't work out well. <laughs> yeah, like, the, the, is that the thing where they're, like, swinging at each other and not making contact at all? With their, like, oh, right. Well, <laughs> yeah. Just twirling my hands. <laughs> Go full General Grievous. Just get, like... A friend to stand close right behind you and like <laughs> pop their arms out from yours and you're like spinning. Oh shit, this guy's got. Yeah. I do. Re... Can I digress for a minute? I do remember that. <laughs> no. Oh, no. There is There's no digressions in this. Bad series. Andy. Strictly Star Wars in the chronological I order. I do remember that day. It was a rainy ass day and I started fighting with this kid who was in a different grade than me. I don't remember if he was one below or one above me, but we were fighting. And then his grandma came over and yelled at us and. From then on, she was called the crappy old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Sad for her, but also accurate. You should respect your elders. You're just doing She's your job. A, I, I, I don't know what happened to that person. Yeah. <coughs> what, the crappy old lady? She's probably dead. Well, I can tell you what you, I would have liked to have sullied imagine. her memory. <coughs> that, That's with on that tombstone. super thoughtful, eloquent insult. Is that on name. Is that on Well, I was in third grade. Peacemaker, crappy old lady. Peace, peacemaker, grandma, crappy old lady. <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least it wasn't some scruff, wrinkly-looking nerf herder. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... All of his grandparents have gone. Yeah, <laughs> All of the grandparents have gone. And we don't want to hear about your wrinkly nerf herder, Andy. Sorry. That's, oh. that's a topic for a different podcast. That's our, that, we'll save that for our holiday special. We're all going to be suffering anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, what else in Return of the Jedi is good? We need to have the Ewok debate. Yeah. Uh, they suck. They're really bad. I'm sorry. I've seen Well, it. again, I mean, I'm watching this as a child. I'm fine with... You know, a bunch of teddy bears helping to save the day. I yeah. mean, not that I, like, watched Care Bears or Gummy Bears or any other bear-themed cartoons or anything. I was just like, hey, this, this is fine. How can you not see the one who gets shot dead and not shed a single tear Ooh, every yeah. time? Look, they're not Jar Jar Binks. They're not Porg. What's wrong with Porgs? They didn't yeah. serve any story function. They didn't get in the way. <laughs> no, 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 I will say this. I appreciate them not getting in the way, but... Yeah. What's the point? You know why they made porks? It's because apparently there are a lot of puffins or some like seabird on the island where they filmed yeah. all the Luke and Ray scenes. Like, well, uh, we don't want to CGI these out. We need to they cover them up with something. Make them cute little creatures, yeah. Huh. I mean, I don't hate porks, but I like Ewoks better than porks. And then Jar Jar Binks is at the bottom of that. Those right, are the right above Rose Tycho, yeah. No, oh, yeah, okay, that's another debate. I'm not <laughs> no, gonna... That's not a debate. That's a, it's like a multilateral agreement that Rose Tycho is like... Is it the, like one of the worst characters in Star Wars? Yeah. It, okay. Not to the detriment of the actress. No. I'm not shitting no, on her. No, no, no. But every scene that that character is in is like the worst scene in the movie. Well, it was poorly written, yeah. Yeah, that whole gambling sequence. I'm not I'm not going to lie. That might be my least favorite sequence in a Star Wars movie. Yeah. And I'm including the pod race. I'm including that weird... Now this is pod race. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm including 
Look, pod racing's great. I'm including the uh, Anakin and Padme scenes in episode two. Yeah. I'm including all because the problem with the with the uh, Canto Bite, that's what it's called, right? Canto Bite. The problem with that is that it can be taken completely out. At least yeah. the pod race and the Anakin scene serve like a story purpose. They're terrible, but like they get you to the next thing. This it's like, oh dude, I could just make an edit of this film where this doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah. And it would be fine. You, so it wasted a half my ass was a half hour number than it should have been <laughs> because could, of this shit. You could shave forty five minutes, if not an hour off this movie, and it would be a better movie for it. Mm. So Make it about an hour and ten minutes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the shortest Star Wars movie ever. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine with me. Yeah, I mean, it, it was not as it was way longer than it needed to be. Oh yeah. Not Return of the Jedi though. Return of the Jedi is just perfect. <laughs> it's well paced, yeah. And the yeah. Ewoks, I, the Ewoks serve enough of a story purpose. Yeah, they're yeah. fine. I don't hate them. It's just, <laughs> I heard they were supposed to be Wookies originally, and I was like, that would have been uh, so awesome. That would have been a lot. Yeah, that would have made a lot more oh, sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. George Lucas just couldn't afford, afford to make the full costumes. So like, oh, just. Chop them in half and <laughs> call them Ewoks instead. Mm-hmm. We'll put some... Switch the two syllables around. Okay, don't have Wookiee <laughs> yeah. and Ewoks. I mean, I guess child labor didn't have the same kind of laws on it in 1983 <laughs> that it does now, so you could just stuff them in those suits and be like, oh, whatever. Mm-hmm. Just the little Southeast Asian children who were making slave wages back in Burma for the same way. Oh, jeez. They get to go be in the redwoods all day. It's, it'll be like a hard vacation for them. It's like you may be giving him too much credit to uh, to guess that he had any idea what the economic situation was for the people he was employing. That's fair. <laughs> the redwoods? They get to hang out in the redwoods That's where they filmed a lot of the... No, I know, but it's just funny like that. They get to hang out in the redwoods all day. I mean, What's that's the big deal? There's a character on Parks and Rec who visits Redwood National Forest at one point. It's like, I'm Endor. This is where Juju Lucas filmed all the Endor sequences. <laughs> Oh, God. I still want to visit Vasquez Rocks. That reminds me of that. Oh, yeah. I still want to visit those. I so, just want to go to Tunisia and see all like the little Tatooine setups that I know. they still have there. I'm good not going to Tunisia. Have you heard when they filmed Raiders there? Ooh. Everybody got diarrhea. <laughs> Everybody, except Steven Spielberg, because mm-hmm. he had SpaghettiO cans shipped into him weekly. And that's all <laughs> he lived on. That's that's sounds like that was the wise move. It yeah, really does. everybody got diarrhea except for him. Mm-hmm. Like, every, John Rhys Davies admits to shitting his pants on the set because he said <laughs> Steven Spielberg was like, "Can you kneel down to give us a better eye line?" And he said, as he kneeled down, it was like, oh. and just, he just shit his pants. Oh man! And he was like, and he's like, and at that point, I didn't care. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of like an iconic Sala line from that movie that like fits this situation. So, see, I can't quote Indiana Jones the way I can I, quote Star Wars. No, I, 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 the one that comes to mind for me would be instead of him saying, "Oh, papers." Yes, I have the paper. Just read it this morning. Uh, I feel it, it would be a question. Papers? Does anyone have papers? I need to wipe my ass. I just shot my pants. <laughs> New pants about the pants? <laughs> or how about a Tunisian Ooh, food? Ah, Very dangerous. Yeah, you bite first. No, no. Bad dates. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Yeah, you win. That, this episode is over. We found it. Yeah. yeah, we can all go home. Yeah, like George Costanza, when he's made a good joke at the movies, he's <laughs> done for the night. Bad dates. <laughs> Kill your gut. Uh, oh, yeah. The, you, okay, so in, in preparation for the, the show, I watched, um, I was just like, what could I do to like re-familiarize myself really briefly with Star Wars? And I found like some blooper reels and was watching them. Have you guys seen the, the footage of Warwick the Ewok, or Wicket, Warwick, Wicket? <laughs> Wicked gets inside like a like a um, uh, rebel uh, an imperial base or whatever, and he sees a bunch of stormtroopers in this room, and then he like walks back down the hall he was sneaking around in, and Boba Fett comes around the corner, and like follows him out. Like don't be. Have you guys that. seen this? Yeah. It's like, Is it a blooper or a deleted scene? I don't know. It, it's it's on like a blooper reel or whatever. It's mostly bloopers, but then there's that scene, and like it's not like as Wicked is running away, he falls on his face so, or something like that. Like it's implying. That it feels more like a deleted scene, but like, like there's no context for any of the scenes I was watching. I didn't know if you guys had seen this or heard no, about it. No, that would be cool. Well, because that implies he didn't die. Yeah. Because like, he goes out in the dumbest way possible in this movie. Well, or, like the biggest Mr. Magoo, like just <laughs> idiot. You could just yeah, as soon as he's like gets hit with that stick and he like is flying mm-hmm. madly and he like bounces off the <laughs> you can hear like the Seinfeld theme playing. No, my favorite My favorite part is where he hits, he's like, oh, and then he rolls in, but then you hear like, da 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 like as he goes down, it's like, and, and the special edition makes it better when the thing burps, the star like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love it so insulting, it's so great, because yeah. he's one of the coolest character, looking characters in Star Wars, yeah, he just definitely has one of the coolest looks, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I wonder if that's, 
Where? Where? <laughs> Harrison Ford earned his paycheck that day. <laughs> Insert Benny Hill thing. Oh, <laughs> talking about people that look like they want to die. Credit to Harrison Ford for not looking like he wants to die in this movie. Oh yeah, he really gives it his all. Yeah, he looks like he, he came wants... through. Yeah, he it looks just... like he's enjoying himself. And he still did it thirty years later for The Force Awakens. He well... still felt like he was giving his all for his character. He felt like Han Solo. It's just that his all isn't as much anymore, Andy. I, I, yeah. I'm just saying he really. I know he didn't want to be in Return of the Jedi. Mm-hmm. So credit to him for not pulling an Alec Guinness. No, he pulled an Alec Guinness for not pulling a Ben Affleck. Yeah, I'm trying to. There's another actor who really didn't want to do that. Anthony Hopkins in the Clone Wars. Good. I was told Kenneth Branagh would be doing all of these. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this Alan Taylor guy? <laughs> What's a Taika Waititi? That doesn't even sound English. <laughs> <sighs> who else wants? Who else hates their life in these movies? Mm. In Star Wars movies? Or no, just in popular movies. In the movies. Mm. Eat yourself up. Mm. The Dark Tower, or just the Dark Tower? And, and <laughs> Thor, apparently, he's oh, like, I don't know, really? fucking helmet again, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, I, I do feel some pretty strong disappointment that that's the character that they kind of... Wasted yourself yeah, on? Yeah, they wasted yeah. him on that. That would have been... Yeah, I mean, he's an awesome actor. I would love to see him. I mean, he could have been Rhodey or something, in War Machine. He should be James Bond. Crazy badass. He's not the MCU. He, he can't be James Bond. Or he doesn't, he, do, he chooses not to be James Bond. Oh, he, did he say he, that? Yeah, he, he said whenever, because the internet was crying out for him to be the next James Bond. Oh. And he just said that pretty much like, I don't want to be the black James Bond. Yeah. Because it's kind of unavoidable yeah. for that to be the case. And I'm like, I can't blame this guy for that at all. Like, well, then that's in a that pretty case, practical John choice. Stewart's calling. Dude, oh my god, yes. John with an H, so that folks aren't thinking about the Daily Show. Right, right yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he'd be I'm, amazing. Of course, if you're role. listening to this podcast, you probably know who John Stewart is. <laughs> I mean, one what's those. a Daily Show? Who's that? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it Tim Daly uh, doing a show now? <laughs> can, I, can I get some more of that? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, if we had to cast James Bond, I would choose Tom Hardy any day. Yeah, he'd be a perfect James Bond. But really. there's no mask that James Bond has to wear. That's <laughs> true. There's probably some torture scene they can put. They'd have to. Yeah. Oh, that's true. He could be the. He could they could whip his nuts Bond. with a rope again. Ooh, <laughs> that was. Oh, that was hard to watch. In a good way. In yeah. a good way. I mean, maybe they could just have some scenes that take place underwater, and he's got some advanced rebreather technology that he has to you know, put something over his face that. Uh, yeah. I just like, breathe underwater. I just like the idea of a James Bond that looks like he's killed a lot of people. <laughs> and Daniel Craig looks like that, and Tom Hardy looks like that. They both look like James Bonds that have just murdered countless people. Yeah, they do. I agree. Yeah, I, I like the idea of a James Bond that got where he is not by... I mean, he, he obviously is suave, but I like the idea that, like, no, there's a lot of bodies behind this guy. Like, he's fucking killed a lot of people. Yeah. Triple digits. Yes, exactly. Are we still on Return of the Jedi, or have we pretty much... I don't really have much else to say. Uh, I think, yeah, I think we talked about the Ewoks. Beating that damn thing to death. Still don't know why they had Boba Fett in that weird deleted scene thing I saw, but yeah, I don't know where it came from or what it was. Uh, Is there a masturbation joke we can make about this? Is there, like, some line that we can use? Yup, yup. (laughs) Yup, yup. (laughs) Uh, That's what... Oh, my God. So Wicket was just coming onto Leia the whole time. That's what yub yub means. Yub yub means. Yub yeah. yub. Like it's like my room or something. It's, yeah, it's, it's your place or mine. It's yeah. just yeah, it's just a mating call for it the means my place. My place. Yeah. Yum yum. Yum yum. Oh, special edition change that is better. I love that they replaced the yub nub song. I know this is sacrilegious, oh. but the the yeah, remastered yeah, theme is much better. Mm. Is much more emotional and better and just caps it off a lot better. Mm. Yeah. Mm, what else do I have to say? I'm still thinking of jerk off jokes. Uh, <laughs> that's just a. That, I'm pretty sure that protocol is constantly running in your mind, though. Right? No, just <laughs> things to make jerk off jokes. Yeah, about. Let the jerk yeah. off flow through you. Yeah. Just, oh, just yeah. Let the horniness flow through you. <laughs> yeah, I remember at my baptism, I'm just gonna make up some jokes for. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. <laughs> just get it. That's uh. No, no, you can't take it back now. Yeah. We all know now. <laughs> I just know that this perverted old priest who's dunking me underwater <laughs> naked is gonna be thinking about this later on when he whips one out. <laughs> okay. Why is it a naked baptism? <laughs> is that are, traditional? I'm just kids? insulting. Just, the, oh, that's true. Oh, so, like, what, I, no, like, like christening. I think they call it a christening when it's a baby, right? Is that what you mean? Like, uh, a, like a baby Catholic, baby? Or, oh, is it? Okay, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm I can, not as well educated. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, you don't have to be educated to make a, uh, a joke uh, like this, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so I'm a baby and I'm making this joke. Like, I've just learned to talk. I'm like, that priest go make. <laughs> Don't think about me later. <laughs> oh, no. Bad description. <laughs> <laughs> Got some crude drawings in there and everything. Yeah, I don't know. Photo realism. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. He's actually very talented. There's secret camera. Yeah, that crucifix up over the, the altar. Yeah. yeah, there's a camera in Jesus' eye that's filming everything. Like, oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> all of his relatives have gone. <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all of his rel- all the people that came to my baptism, they've all gone. <laughs> Looks like he's going nowhere. <laughs> Where you going? Nowhere. <laughs> Sorry, that's uh, I actually just mixed a line from the Boondock Saints with the Spider Man. Oh, I thought that was from uh I thought it was a Bone Saw reference. Yeah, I thought yeah, it, it was, was Bone Saw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Boom yeah. Saw is ready. Yeah. You got you yeah, your mind your mind for three minutes. <laughs> three minutes of daytime. <laughs> <laughs> that's a masturbation joke, totally, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> three minutes. Three minutes of playtime! Yeah. <laughs> so, so, like, like when I'm home alone and I know my family is coming home in, like, ten minutes, <laughs> so I'm like, three minutes of playtime! <laughs> force close the door. Force shut the blind. Force, <laughs> whoosh, force, force grab the broom to clean up after. <laughs> what? No, just a sanitary napkin. So someone grabs the broom with the force in Last Jedi, so. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's what you're missing out of mm-hmm. this movie. Yeah. Simply grabbing a broom with the force. And who didn't want to see horse racing in Star Wars Movie 2? I didn't realize they were going to start with the Disney crossovers already and put Mary Poppins into Last Jedi. When you wish upon a Death Star. <laughs> but Mary Poppins uses the force too, doesn't she? I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! <laughs> God damn it. The, the greatest Mary Poppins joke of all time is Sherry Bobbins from The Simpsons. Sherry Poppins is good, but I still feel like Michael Rooker is, is Yondu Poppins. <laughs> his, his top five for me. It's, it's difficult to beat, but I love where she's going up. And then Lisa's like, do you think we'll ever see her again? And they turn around and she gets sucked into a jet engine. <laughs> and he's like a passing plane. And he's like, I'm sure we will, Lisa. But he's like, <laughs> 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 it's like so abrupt. Yeah, back in The Simpsons, like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, it was funny. Before they were in their prequel era. Ooh. I mean, they're not prequels now, but yeah, that's basically the original. prequels. <laughs> so is that it? Anything I, else we want to make fun of? I think we've milked these as hard as we can. <laughs> Blue milk these? Blue milks, yeah. Yeah. Ban- or what are those things called? The sea siren that he milks the out of their tit? I've chosen oh. not to commit that penalty. Yeah, I think it's called the sea siren or something like that. I don't Super know. creative. Yeah, it's, yeah. I, w- I couldn't have come up with that. It's not like Walt Disney. I'm not Walt Disney. <laughs> I mean, it's no, <laughs> it's no Tarkin turns around and he's Christopher Walken, but I mean, I guess that's cool. <laughs> I can only maintain these jokes for so long. <laughs> On the next episode, we fan cast modern American actors in classic Star Wars roles. <laughs> that actually sounds like it's got potential. I think, yeah. I can watch the shit out of that. Uh, fill a notebook with ideas. Alden Einrich is Han Solo. <laughs> no, you get out. <laughs> Wait, you can tell. You can say get out after uh, after Bay if you want to shit. I, I, yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be fun. Disney doesn't <laughs> yeah, release. Be... Disney doesn't release like Fantastic Four level of turds. Yeah. This will come out and it will be fine and everybody will forget about it and it, you know it's not yeah. like when Sony released Ghostbusters or Sony released the Dark Tower or yeah. Sony released The Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Or Sony released the Emoji <laughs> Movie or Sony released Pixels or Sony released any of these other fucking things. Like. Yeah. Opie's yeah. Opie's not gonna disappoint us. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie Howard. Nobody's yeah. making fun of Andy Griffith. <laughs> yeah, we can't emphasize <laughs> that enough. Yeah. <laughs> so is that it? Yeah, I, I think feel so. like that's about We're it. Also, yeah. High note. Thank you and good night, everybody. Thanks for being on, Ben. Thanks for having me back. Yes. Uh, trust and me, you will be back again. Thanks to my parole agent for letting me out of the house for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Officer Barnes. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds legit. Thank you, Officer Anderson. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, everybody, to you for listening and listening to all of our weird jokes and all that. We're sorry if we disturbed you, and we're sorry if you had kids in the car while listening to this. We're sorry, yeah. That's yeah, we're, we, we apologize. <laughs> Have a great one, everybody, and we'll see you next time.